All right, so a programmer, an engineer, and a mechanic are riding in a car through the mountains. They get to a mountain pass, it's very steep, they come down the hill, and the brakes are smoking and almost fail, and they're terrified, they think they almost die. They get to the bottom of the hill, they control the car, get it over to the side, they get out, and they kind of assess their situation. The mechanic says, I think the brake pads in this thing are smoked, we need to get a new set of pads. And the engineer says, no, I think they're actually undersized for what we're doing with it, I think we need to upsize the whole system. And the programmer says, well, maybe we just didn't get lucky. Let's push it back up the top of the hill and try it again. Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I'm Dave Plummer, a retired operating systems engineer from Microsoft, going back to the MS DOS and Windows 95 days. And today, I'm going to demo and show you how to achieve source level Visual Studio style debugging on an Arduino microcontroller such as the ESP32, complete with breakpoints, watches, call stacks, exceptions, and everything you'd hope for in a modern dev environment. And it works on Windows, Linux, and the Mac. For me, the amount of fun and enjoyment one can get out of a coding session is often directly related to how seamless and elegant the development process actually is. Being stuck with printf style debugging on a system that has a long edit, compile, and test loop can be demoralizing because it's just not a lot of fun. We'll even set up the luxury of single stepping through the code line by line, but I really think it's the basics that are the most important. The ability to set a breakpoint within a key function and be able to inspect memory and variables when that breakpoint fires. I recently released a video on how to set up source level debugging for the Raspberry Pi, but that was using the full Visual Studio product from Microsoft. Today, we'll be using the lighter and snappier alternative known as Visual Studio Code. Within Code, we'll use the free Platform IO IDE. Behind the scenes, it will invoke such tools such as GCC and OpenOCD for you in order to provide a great development environment. This integration makes it appear as though Visual Studio Code has all of these features natively built right in. Finding the right hardware to debug with can be tricky. I'll be using a board right from the chip manufacturer Espressif, who also makes the ESP32 chip itself. Because you can't just turn debugging on on a normal ESP32. You need what's known as a JTAG interface. That interface gives you a serial port on one end and a bunch of breakout wires you connect directly to specific pins on the ESP32 itself. Normally, you would buy a separate daughter board like the ESP Prog board. You'd plug your serial cable into the ESP Prog board and it would in turn be connected on top of the ESP32 and provide in-circuit debugging that way. The Rover kit, however, has it all in one. There's a special chip known as an FTDI chip that comes all the way from Scotland, and it exposes not one, but two interfaces on the same physical port. That means you can be communicating with the chip itself over the normal serial port while you get a second connection to a hardware debugger that OpenOCD in turn uses to control and debug the ESP32. You can also be debugging and have the serial monitor open at the same time because they are truly separate logical ports. Note that both are connected to the same physical USB connector, so it's one cable. To make this all work, we need to do one bit of magic, and that is to replace the normal USB serial port driver on the port that we're going to be debugging with. We need to install a special WinUSB driver on that device so the debugger can work with it directly. How the heck are we going to swap the driver out from a running device and what do we replace it with? Fortunately, somebody wrote a nice simple utility called ZA Diag that does it all for you. You simply find the port and click a button. So let's do that now. Rather than script and describe everything I plan to do in order to get debugging running, I thought I'd set it up for real and demo it for you live. That will also help ensure that I don't skip or forget to mention any important steps. And now I seamlessly transition to OBS Studio. Oops, I guess if my microphone was in frame. Ha <laughs> ha. And now I seamlessly transition to OBS Studio where I can do this segment of the show live so that you can see me do all the steps and I won't forget to mention any of them because it'll either work or not when I'm done. Now I have done this on this machine before and I tried to undo all the steps. The only thing I couldn't undo was the driver but I'll explain that because there's two interfaces. It'll make sense when I show you. Because the first thing we need to do is to replace one of the serial port drivers. I know this sounds scary but it's actually not. And once you have the ZA Diag program that you can get from the video description, and so I'll switch to a desktop view, which will allow me to bring in ZA Diag. Now you'll notice right away it says absolutely nothing. It has no devices listed. I don't fully understand this app, but the first thing you need to do is go to options and pick list all devices. Next, we need to find the device that says dual interface, RS-232 dual interface. Here we go. There's interface zero and interface one. Now if I look at interface zero, it actually already has the WinUSB driver because I've already done it. If I look at interface one, it still says FTDI bus. Once you've installed just the basic vanilla drivers for your board, 
That's what both of your interfaces will say, FTDI bus for both of them. We're going to replace it just on interface zero. So go to your interface zero and click reinstall driver for just that one. Leave interface one entirely alone. When you're done, let's bring up device manager and I'll show you basically what you get. So now I have COM10, which is the COM port for this board. And I have USB serial converter B, and there used to be USB serial converter A. Once you plug in the board and have the FTDI drivers, you should, if you want to check it first, you should have two devices down here in your, in your USB list, and it should be USB serial converter A and B. Once you've made the change, you'll just have B left. Next, make sure the jumpers on your Rover kit are configured correctly. I believe mine came correct out of the box, but the main thing is if you check online, you can find the JTAG jumper configuration, and it basically is install all the jumpers. And I'll show you a quick little video of mine so you can see roughly what it looks like, and you'll be able to just basically replicate this. It is, I believe, if I look down here, the white ones that are the important ones, for debugging purposes at least. With the device plugged in, configured, and installed, we can head over to the desktop, and I can bring up Visual Studio code that is we're going to say file new actually no we're not we're going to go to platform io if you haven't already installed platform io that's the only extension that you need to do it will suggest some others when you do that like the c plus extension and you should take those payloads but uh the main thing is to get platform io installed because it is the ide extension in which we will be doing all of our microcontroller programming next i'm going to say new project i'm going to give it a name like debug test, SP32, and I'm just going to type Rover, and it should suggest and find the Rover kit board, which it does. We'll make framework Arduino, and we'll use the default location. As soon as I click finish, it'll chew away for a few seconds, and it's already ready. We can go look at main, and we can see this truly is skeletal. It just has a setup and a loop that do nothing. But it's a good proof of concept, so let's try control shift build and see what we get. Five seconds. Hmm, let me clean it and build again. I'm sure it can do it in four. I'm sure. Oh, but I'm, my machine's also encoding 4K video and doing everything else at the same time here. There you go, four and a half seconds. Let me know in the comments how long it takes your machine and what your machine is. I'm just curious to see what the relative build times are like. And if you're faster than mine, well, I mean, it's because I'm encoding 4K video at the same time. It's not my, not my fault. Anywho, let's try debugging it. All we need to do is set a breakpoint in setup. You know what? Let's not get too fancy. Let's try uploading it first. All right, we're uploaded. Let's go to the debug tab and we'll click go. I'm going to switch over to the debug console. I can see it's connected, so the serial port stuff is all working. I can see both cores, so I know it's talking to the real chip. And it will take a second, and then it'll finally hit the initial app main breakpoint. We're right inside the Arduino code for the ESP32. And if you've ever wondered, how does it call setup and loop? If you're not curious, I'm going to tell you anyway. Um, there's a loop task, which is a separate thread, gets spun off here. And if we go look at loop task, which we can do now by saying go to definition, how handy. We can see it calls setup once and then just perpetually calls loop. It also whacks the watchdog. So is it still politically correct to say whack the watchdog or how do you discourage the watchdog from here rebooting your system? I don't know. It used to be kick the watchdog, which is, no, well, you know, kick dogs. That's, that's nonsense. Dogs are lovely. Well, except the ones that chase you and bite you. But. So from that initial app main breakpoint, if we click go, it should hit our setup breakpoint. And sure enough, it promptly does. I can press step over or and we're back into the caller. Now, this is a really, really simple project. This much worked a while ago, but I found that more complicated projects, even a year or two ago, didn't work if you had uh, attempted to you know, debug interrupts or multiple threads or pretty much any complicated scenario. It just didn't work for me, but it does now. And that is why I'm making this video because it's cool and it works. Let's go to a complicated project. I'm gonna load up Night Driver Strip. This is LED control software that I wrote to do basically Christmas lights and all kinds of LED effects, but it has all kinds of ESP32 Arduino features, such as Wi-Fi and a web server built in. It has a socket for receiving color data over the web. It draws LEDs. Um, 
It's just got a ton of functionality. You know, it does audio processing. It does an FFT 30 times a second to be able to draw a spectrum analyzer waveform, all kinds of things. So I'm going to set a breakpoint deep inside the drawing code, and we'll see if we can have that work and inspect variables and so on in single step once we get in that far. So if I go to drawing, I should be, is this the drawing function? Yeah, this is the drawing loop. I can scroll through deep to where it is about to, it is just drawn, or is about to draw, all the pixels. And now it's about to place them on the actual LED strip. So here we can actually see fast LED, set LED is being called, the real core work. Let's build this, make sure it builds. A much more substantial project. This one took 18 seconds and it runs in the 15 to 18 second range. Let me upload it. I wonder which tool this is using. Is it gonna use FTDI or Serial? We'll find out. Neither, because it's set to COM7, and we need COM10. Oh, so it's going to use ESP tool. I'm going to change it to FTDI, and I'll show you it uploading with the FTDI protocol, which is really more a case of, I believe, it's just placing memory blocks and then verifying and writing them. But I'm not a hardware guy, so I don't know. Well, it's working, but it said libusb open failed. I can see the lights on the chip going though, so let's we'll see if the verify passes. Verify OK. Now I've added one extra line here to platformio.any. Debug init break equals nothing. And that will get rid of that initial breakpoint, or it should. Um, I've had problems with being able to delete breakpoints that they just persist once they're set and I have to reboot the chip. And after a little delay, it finally hit our breakpoint. Now, I can check and I can see that my local variables are available. My call stack is here. I don't have a lot of screen real estate here to show you all this, but uh, let me bring this down a bit. So I can see all my threads. I've named my threads so that you can see they have reasonably logical names like draw loop, network handling, debug loop, screen loop, and so on. So we can see what the screen loop is doing as an example. It's stuck in update screen doing a print at this second. But back to our, it might look a little confusing because I have full optimizations 03 turned on in this code. So it looks like it's jumping around a bit, but uh, it does appear to be working properly. So this is fairly complex code, you know, compared to what the uh, demo project was. And it all seems to work. This video is some serious narrow casting. The number of people just casually surfing YouTube that would actually want to watch a video on debugging the ESP32 Arduino setup is shockingly low. So if you know where those people actually are, be it on Twitter or Reddit or a message group or wherever, please share a link to this episode with them. I'd very much appreciate it. Now that we're getting towards the end of the year, it could be your last chance to grab a classic Dave's Garage mug from the channel store. Why? Because all channel profits from the calendar year 2021 are being donated to the UW Autism Center. Subscribe. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Are you subscribed yet? This little chair will be waiting for one of you. And a rocking chair for another who likes to rock. And a big armchair for two to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.